Yeah. Love at first sight. Yep. It love was. at first sight. But it should be. Yes. It should be. It should be love Energy at first sight. Should feel yes. good. It because should. you're talking to this person every single day. What's up, beautiful people? I'm Erin, and this is Erin on Demand. And I have a special guest, somebody very, very special to me. My brand manager, Ashley Fox. Oh, thanks, girl. So Welcome excited. to Erin on Demand, girl. I am so excited to be on this side of I the camp. I know, because she is always on, on the, the other side, side yes. negotiating deals mm -hmm. and doing all the things. So we're going to talk about the brand management side of influencing, why you need or don't need one yet. Hi, Turk. Turk. Um, and just all the things that you guys ask me about having a brand manager, how much does it cost, at what point do you need one, all of those things we're going to go through in this video, and we're going to try to do it rather quickly. So It's going to be rapid fire. Yes. Let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. So first things first, what is Iconic Fox? So Iconic Fox is a talent management agency, and we represent creators across the lifestyle space. But with that said, everyone tends to specialize. So it's it no longer is just the lifestyle content creator. Really, it is about finding your niche within that. So we always say, you gotta ground your brand within whatever space within lifestyle. So we represent creators across all different industries and our whole thing is about representing diverse voices, bold voices, unique voices, and really amplifying their brand. Yes. Yes. And Ashley and Jared, her husband, they both run the company together mm -hmm. and they are incredible, you guys. <laughs> I have had the best experience with them. I've been on you guys' talent roster for about a year and a half now and they are the most organized, <laughs> just loving, caring people, which is hard to come by in this industry. Yeah. But they just sent us to Austin, Texas fun. for a creator meetup with their entire creator yep. roster. And we just had the best time hanging out and yeah. like enjoying the city and, and it was bonding. sponsored. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so it we just fun. had a really good time. And I think that that's just such a big thing that makes you guys really unique is that you just care Thank so you. much. So. Well, it goes both ways. Yes. <laughs> because it, it really is about relationships in this industry, in any industry, but especially in the content creation industry, it's about the relationship that you have with your audience, but it's also about our relationship that we have with you mm -hmm. and with our brand and agency partners. So at the end of it, it's really about who are you doing this for? Yeah. And what's the purpose behind that? For sure. Yeah. So let's get into what do brand managers do? So on a day-to-day -day basis, what we specifically do, I always talk to about what we do, but what your talent management agency should be doing is really building and fostering those relationships with the brand agency partners to really amplify your opportunities, but also understanding who you are as a content creator. And it's not just about taking whatever deal comes your way or comes our way. It's really about figuring out where are you trying to go as a content creator mm. and getting you there. So it's also about saying no to the things that we should be saying no to, not just because of money, but also because of brand alignment. Yeah. So a lot of what we're doing behind the scenes is fostering those relationships, fostering those opportunities, and also understanding where you're trying to go and getting you there faster. Yeah. And they also just help so much with the overall business side of it. Like That's a lot you of... You guys yeah. really teach me a lot of stuff and they have so many connections like if I call Ashley I'm like I need a PR person she's like okay I'm gonna like send mm -hmm. you some options yeah. or whatever I need I feel like you guys have such a pulse on the industry and what's going on you're such a big resource for us thank you so yeah. that's really helpful now in terms of like the day-to-day you help with contract, well, you do like yes, negotiate all contracts, of it. rates, yeah. and all of that. So can yep. we talk about that? Yeah, so it's the back-end business side. So really, our whole goal is to free Aaron up and each content creator up to do what they should be doing, which is really the creative aspect. And even with that, we always love to brainstorm and support on the creative side. But we're doing all of the back end. So it's everything from contracts, negotiating, to the invoicing side, to just keeping everything running smoothly so that you know where you need to be, what you yes. need to have, all the dates, all the deliverables, all the things basically to run a tight ship and a smooth show, not only for you, but also for 
the brand agency partners to have a great experience as well. Working with, because most of the time they're spent, they're spend most of their time talking to you, not mm -hmm. me. So yeah. that makes a huge difference. If agencies like working with your management, then yep. they're probably going to pitch you more deals. A hundred, a hundred percent. So yes. it makes a huge difference. And I saw a big uptick in the deals that I was getting just because of, from working with you guys. Yeah. So it really is about having a solid network. So every content creator in our group is a reflection of each other and also our team as well. So when you're signing with management or considering management, you have to ensure that the team that you're signing with aligns to your values, your core, how you do business, and even the transparency behind it. Because yeah. a big thing for us <clears throat> is making sure that we're transparent about that process because we're in it together as a team. Yeah. And oftentimes those two things can get siloed quickly. So, and if that works for you, that works for you, but it doesn't work for us. So it's really about figuring out every team is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Every creator is different. So finding that kind of workflow and the type of team that you want to be with, ask all of those questions up front. And that's what I was going to ask you next. What would you say are some red flags? Mm -hmm. If someone is out there looking for a uh, talent management, what are some red flags where you'd be like, Ugh, yep. I don't know, you, sh you should probably either do a little bit digging mm -hmm. or you know, not go with them? I, the first thing that I would say is email. So if you're passing, either you can pass off your emails or have someone who has access to your email. You need to make sure, in my opinion, and Jared and I, when we started this, is do you have access to all of that? Are you Do you have a pulse on how those partners are being communicated with? And is that in even the tone of voice that you would be communicating with them? Because if you're just cut out of all of that communication entirely, That's you may not know how. It, yeah. I'm like, is there a reason why? And obviously we're having conversations constantly on the back end of just with our brand agency partners, but anything coming into you, yeah. you know, just, just keep it in mind as far as yeah. the communication transparency goes, as well as contracts, you should have access to the contracts and visibility into what your team is signing on your behalf. So right. you should understand what you're signing up for, mm -hmm. what the budget is behind that, what deliverables, exclusivity, just having a pulse. And it doesn't mean you need to micromanage your team, but you should just have access. Again, that transparency factor. Mm -hmm. And if there's a reason why they're not sharing that with you, you should be, that's a huge red flag. And yeah. you should be raising that concern ahead of signing. Mm -hmm. So all of these things should be discussed upfront and how that's handled and then how payments are handled. So how is that distribution? Some teams are on you know, certain times of the month, certain teams have a certain flow, and every team is a little bit different. For us, it's as things come in, they're getting paid out. Yeah. So, and again, that's not right or wrong, right. but just make sure that you understand when you're signing up and you're you know, locking in your business with a management team, that you understand how all of those pieces flow and fit within your, within your business so that you're not getting caught off guard and you didn't yeah. expect something. What about when a contract is binding for a specific amount of time? Would you consider that a red flag? Or so, do you think it should be more free will? Like, okay, if this just doesn't work, then we can just A hundred percent. I do think that, so you should have a contract with your management team for both sides, mm -hmm. for your sake and also for your management team's sake. That's a professional way of doing business, but at the same time, understand what those parameters, what your termination, what your, all of those factors that go into any contract. But we always recommend a trial period. And then beyond that, having, again, like you said, the kind of at will or free will. So if it's not working out, you're not obligated to yeah. just be with them for years on end. Um, our whole method and our thought process behind it is if it's not the right fit for whatever reason on either side, no one should be forced to work together. So definitely understand your termination rights up front. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't understand the payment side of it yep. and how the management actually gets paid. So yep. can you explain that? So. For most management teams, there is a commission involved. It can range anywhere from 15 all the way up to 25, 30% in some cases. Mm -hmm. So from that side of things, we're negotiating, any management team's going to negotiate the full contract value. So let's just say it's like 10K. 
to keep it easy. So of that, think of the management as 15, 20% commission will come out of that 10K and that will get paid directly to the management team and then the influencer content creator will get the rest of the payment yeah. um, that's remaining. And again, ask those questions up front for who sends the invoice, who collects the funds, how does the W-9 get handled, all of those questions should be handled before you sign with management so that, again, there's, there's no, no surprise at the end of it of who does what. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree because I think a lot of people get scared with the trust. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh my gosh, they're getting paid my money and then they have to pay me. What if, mm -hmm. what if I don't get my money? But yep. That's a big reason why you need to ask all the questions. You have to ask the <laughs> questions and you should yeah. feel, you should feel completely comfortable and confident if you're taking those conversations further and asking, you know, who do you work with? You know, what are some other content creators if it's not listed on the website? And ask those content creators, what's been your experience mm -hmm. of working with that management team? It's no different than any other job. You yeah. would ask for some references of what their experience has been like. And those are some conversations that you can have with them to understand what that transparency looks like. And for us, we have you know, a tracking system so you can kind of see where all of your payments are. But not every team works like that yeah. and has the organization behind it. But I would recommend making sure those conversations are had up front in the visibility and kind of where your money is. Yes, agreed. Mm -hmm. Now let's get into how does someone know if they are ready to have a talent manager? A lot of you ask me, you know, I'm a smaller creator yep. and I feel like I need a manager or I'm getting emails, I'm starting to see interest. Yeah. I'm just not sure if it's the time. So how do you know when it's the time? Yeah, so it's a great question and it's a conversation that we have with creators, even probably some of you that have reached out. And it's not that, you know, the, even the people that aren't ready for management couldn't be there at some point. But the reality is most people, and don't take this the wrong way, but most people do not need management. And that doesn't mean you're not making great money, or you're not a great creator. But when you get to a certain point in your business and in really any industry, you have to scale your team at some point. So when you've gotten to the point of, I can't keep up anymore. And it's not just can't keep up with my inbox of like, I get all this gifted opportunity. Like you're, you're seeing significant. Reputable brands too. Yes, that are reputable like, what are brands. Your rates? We need this by this yes. day. And like, you're getting real yeah. contracts. Yes. Yeah, you're getting, you're making some real, not only money, but you're also trying to scale your business to a point where you're like, I can't do the back end and I can't build those relationships the way that you wanna build them with your community at the same time, because at the end of the day, we also call our brand agency partners our community mm -hmm. as well. So you need to be focused on solely on your audience and your content, even some of the other platforms that you may want to scale that you just yeah. don't have bandwidth. the time and bandwidth yeah. for. And so you want to find a team that you can trust, that has the same values, that has the same workflow, work ethic, and that's really at the point where you're like, I truly can't keep up, but we always say, especially when you're starting out, especially for those who are just like blowing up, but you just got started, you really need to do a few partnerships on your own at least to just get the experience. Mm -hmm. You need to understand what you're getting into to even understand what type of team that you need behind you yeah. and how that operates. So. We always say, take your time and, and slowly ease into it. But the worst thing to do is I need management to make me money because mm -hmm. you should already be making building money. business, mm -hmm. making money. You were very successful. It's just when you want to take it to that next phase and you really want to relinquish some of the back end control so that you can scale, yes. you did it at the right time. I was drowning. I was yeah. like... I yeah. cannot do this by myself. Like mm -hmm. it, I was leaving so many deals out there in my, in my email because I just didn't know how to negotiate. I didn't know how to like mm -hmm. modify the contracts. Yeah. I didn't. And then I, I also felt like brands had more respect when I <laughs> had a manager. I just, I felt like there was a different There's way a they communicated with me. So yeah. even if you are like, what do you think about having like a little alias for yourself 
You and totally can. Using that. You certainly can. Yes. Okay. You certainly can. It's just that at the end of the day, they're going to look it up. They're going to also know. Oh. <laughs> they're going to know. Like, I mean, at this point, they're going to know. <laughs> so, Rebecca is yeah. actually still Aaron. <laughs> Rebecca is Aaron. But it's it's a good idea. And some people will do that as like their assistant yeah. that is working with them. And that's completely okay. To just test the waters and see what happens. But there is also a perception for... The brands and agencies, they know they're working with a professional team. So it's not necessarily you. It's mm -hmm. also just the reputation that can be out there of they know. And it's not that content creators can't negotiate, can't do their own brand deals. It's just that they're also distracted by, and they should all be, the other things all the other things. You're doing. Yeah, yeah, you have 5 million other things that you should be focused on. So they know they're going to have our undivided attention or a good management team's undivided attention because it's, the negotiation is just the beginning. And, that's, and then it's the hundred other emails. Exactly. <laughs> and it's so much email and so mm -hmm. much back and forth. And when you guys have relationships, I was talking to another one of the creators at the meetup and she, she used to work in PR. Mm -hmm. And she said a big reason why she stayed on with you guys is because she realized how important it was to have good relationships, not just with the creators, but with the brands. Yep. And how much working with, the brand management mm -hmm. is like a huge part of the process. Yeah. So if they don't like you, they're just not going to work with you. Correct. Um, so <laughs> I think that that just goes to show the value of having management on mm -hmm. both sides. It's like cultivating the brand relationships and just getting so much off of your plate as the creator. Yes. So like if you could just bullet some of the advantages of having a brand manager, what would you say? I would say the biggest thing is time. You get your time back. Yes, you get, you're going to ultimately, you should be making more money because you should have more time to build your brand on your side and exponentially grow. And then we, as your talent management team or whatever team you're joining, should be dedicated to making sure they're putting you in front of all of the right opportunities, exposing you to their network so that more things are coming in. So yes, money should be part of it. And then also just a strategic partner. Mm -hmm. So where are you taking your brand? Like you said, it should ultimately, at least in our opinion and how we operate is it, we serve as that foundation to your brand. And so whatever direction that you're trying to head, a lot of times we're like, Hey, we need to rein it back. We need to focus over here. Yeah. We don't need to do all these other things. Right. Not right now. <laughs> Let's get there. But there are these other things that we need to focus on first. So really being that strategic partner that you can bounce those ideas off of. So time, money, and then a strategic partner, ultimately the three things that I would say to just kind of dial it back and, and focus yeah. on. And I will say this, as a content creator, one of the big mistakes that creators make when it comes to not hiring a brand or a talent manager is that they think they're losing money because they hear 20%. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm, I have to give away 20%, but a yeah. good talent manager <laughs> is going to always negotiate more. Yeah. So I will say Ashley and Jared pay for themselves because <laughs> the way she, the way she negotiates, I would probably not even ask for what you ask for. Well, we have a pulse on what yeah. the back end is because we always have, we always say this, we always have reason for the numbers that we're putting out there. There's always a reason. A big thing for us is looking for longer term relationships. So even if it starts by just a couple of posts, those teams are coming back again and again because of the experience that they've had. So we know not only on our creator side, but even on our side, like all of us as a team, are worth a certain number when we're negotiating that mm -hmm. we're also going to provide the best experience. And that's how you have to come at it because at the end of the day, the brands and agencies, they, all, they only have so many marketing dollars to spend. Mm -hmm. But as a good management team, you should be keeping a pulse on the market, keeping a pulse on your creator, especially if they're a specialist in a certain area that they're being contracted <laughs> for, they're worth more. So yeah. it's like weighing all of these different nuances about each creator and then what we're seeing in the industry and then the experience that we're going to give our brand and agency partner that then commands certain rates. And that's where it's like on your side as the creator, making sure you're dialed in, you know that you're bringing your A game, you know no one can top you in the market. And then also having a talent team that can 
match that energy and match that, you know, that level that you've gotten yourself to yeah. making sure your team matches that. So then you can amplify everything. Yes. Yes. Oh, this was so good. Yes. It Are was. there any, um, okay. I know they're going to want to know how to work with you guys. <laughs> um, so like, can you just tell people how to get in touch? Yeah. Yeah. We have a form on our site. It just makes everything easy so we can kind of get a pulse on where things are for each creator. And it's on our contact page. We can drop it in the description if you yep. want. And it basically gives us some back-end information. And then if it's not the right fit right now, it doesn't mean it's It's not forever. And we will try our best to get back to every single one yeah. that reaches out and at least give some inside scoop as to what you could be doing to get to that next phase. So, Well, thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Um, Thanks, and guys. if you guys have any more questions about uh, talent managing or just – being a creator, growing in your field, like growing as a creator and just making it your career, please leave them down below. I'd be happy to do more videos. Also, Ashley is like yeah. an easy resource. So yes. I can also ask her questions on your behalf as well. So I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.